Hi everyone, Ryan Jackson here. Hope you're doing well. We're going to talk about the 2020 changes that were made to Articles 320 and 330 for Armored Cable and MC Cable, Metal Clad Cable. Starting with Article 320, although uh, the change here in 320.23 actually applies uh, throughout Chapter 3. It's not just for AC Cable, but MC Cable, NM Cable, UF Cable, uh, SE cable, pretty much any cable uh, has to comply with this section. So let's take a peek at 320.23, and this has to do with cables in accessible attics. The rules for protection of cables in attics were clarified, and I'm just going to be perfectly honest. This is a rule that I misunderstood for the first, well, I don't know, 20 years of my career. <laughs> it was one of those rules, and we've probably all been there. It was one of those rules for me that it took, uh, it took somebody that didn't know anything about the code to point it out to me. Because I had been so wrong and I had convinced myself for so many years that it said one thing, that finally somebody who had never read the rule before raised his hand in a class and he said, I don't think that's what it says. And I said, well, of course that's what it says. What are you talking about? And, and I looked a little bit deeper and uh, I found out that I misunderstood this rule for about 20 years. And uh, if I'm being perfectly honest, just about everybody I know misunderstood this rule for about 20 years. So let's take a peek at what it says. It says, if the attic is accessible by a permanently installed ladder or stair, all cables throughout the entire attic require protection if they're lower than seven feet above the attic floor for any cable installed on the floor or on the surface of a framing surface. So whether it's on trusses, rafters, studs, joists, uh, rafters, anything, it needs to have protection. So if you have a permanently installed ladder or stair, you need to protect all the cables throughout the entire attic from the floor up seven feet. And the only change here is clarifying that when we say it's accessible by a ladder or stair, it has to be permanently installed ladders or stairs. You know, if I go out to my garage and grab my six foot A-frame and put it in my, in my hallway to, to access my attic, well, then the attic is accessed by a stair, by, or pardon me, by a ladder, uh, but it's not a permanently installed ladder or stair. Now, in the photograph here, in my opinion, that is a permanently installed ladder. You, you connect these things to the framing. They stay up there forever. This would be a permanently installed stairway or ladder, a ladder, obviously, in this instance. So the issue here is if I have easy access to the attic space, then the homeowner or, or business owner, perhaps, uh, is much more likely to store things up there. And they're much more likely to go up into the attic if it's easy to get into the attic. You know, if a person has to actually get a ladder and drag it in, most, home, most homeowners are not going to spend any time in the attic. But if we make it easy for them, then they will get up in the attic and they'll store things. And once you're up in the attic, then tripping over cables or hanging things on cables, you know, like uh, coat hangers, things like that, becomes a problem. So we need to protect all the wiring in the entire attic from the floor up seven feet if the area is accessible by a permanently installed ladder or stair. Now, if we keep reading, it says it must be protected by guard strips throughout the entire attic, and again, from the floor up seven feet. However, if there is no permanent ladder or stair, like the one here shown in the, uh, in the photograph, then the protection is only required within six feet of the attic access. So the six foot is a horizontal dimension, the horizontal measurement. So when you walk into the attic, for the first six feet, you need to be walking on wood not on cables. So that's the rule here. And that's why it says that guard strips have to be at least as high as the cable. And that's what this board here is. In fact, on the top left, you can see a great example. You've got the NM cable. It's going alongside parallel with that board. That board is protecting it. That is our guard strip. So if you do not have a permanently installed stairway or ladder, you have to protect the wiring from the floor up seven feet within six feet of the attic access. But if we were to go back, if I have a permanently installed stairway or ladder, you got to protect every stitch of wiring in the entire attic for a height up to seven feet. So 
Very little changed here, but if you're like me, you might have misunderstood this section for a very long time. I always looked at it until a couple, until a few years ago. I always viewed this as saying that you needed to protect the, the wiring within six feet, measured horizontal, or if you had a permanent stairway or ladder, that you needed to protect it within seven feet, measured horizontally. And I thought, that, that's stupid. Why one foot of difference is, you know, why, why do we even have this rule? And that's not what it says at all. You have to protect all wiring in the entire attic up to seven feet in height if you have a permanently installed stairway or ladder, but you only need to do that within six feet of the attic access if it is not accessible by a permanently installed stairway or ladder. The next change is in 320.30, securing and supporting. Subtle little thing here. The support requirements for AC cable were revised for consistency with other similar code requirements, and this was a good change for sure. So we get into the rules for securing and supporting. It tells us that cables have to be supported every four and a half feet, and horizontal cables installed in framing members or similar are considered both supported and secured if they're spaced at four foot six maximum intervals. Now this is what the other cable articles say for MC cable and NM cable, for example. But before, it only said that AC cable was considered supported. And if we're being honest, I don't have to consider that supported. It is supported. I mean, it, it's laying on a, on a hole in the wall. That, that's support, right? But it wasn't considered secured. And we have to have both. We have to have supporting and we have to have securing. So if you read this literally, yes, that cable was supported, but it wasn't secured. And you have to secure it every four and a half feet. You could easily make the argument that you would have to go through and install a strap every four and a half feet for AC cable. You did not need to do that for MC cable or NM cable because those two articles, 330.30 and 334.30, both said that the cable is considered secured and supported if you're going through holes in framing members. So now AC cable says the same thing that MC and NM cables said. The next change, 320.80, ampacity. The rules for cables that are installed in thermal insulation or ceiling foam were revised for consistency with other cable articles. And we also made similar changes in 330.80 for MC cable and 338.10 B4A2 for SE cable installed indoors. All right, let's take a look here. 320.80A in thermal insulation. It says type AC cable installed in thermal insulation must have 90 degree conductors all right so you have to make it with 90 degree you know thhn thwn-2 whatever kind of conductors you have but the final ampacity must be based on the 60 degree column of table 310.16 so this is very similar to nm cable or romex uh, we have to make it out of 90 degree wire and we have to pretend that the wire is only good for 60 degrees. And I think that probably saves people from themselves if we're being perfectly honest. So we have to pretend that it's a 60 degree cable. Now the 90 degree rating can be used for ampacity adjustment or correction only. So if I have multiple cables installed without uh, maintaining spacing, then I can do the correction, pardon me, the adjustment based on the 90 degree ampacity because it is a 90 degree wire provided that the final ampacity does not exceed 60, the 60 degree column. Uh, same thing for temperature correction if I'm installing them in a high ambient temperature. Now that didn't change. What changed here is some new language that is similar to that in 334.80 for NM cable. I say similar, but not the same. Uh, there is a subtle difference here. It says if multiple cables contact thermal insulation, uh, or ceiling foam or caulk without separation, then the ampacity must be adjusted using 310.15C1. And that's the adjustment factors for multiple cables installed, you know, for more than 24 inches in length. Now, unfortunately, there is no 24 inch language here. And it doesn't, uh, in, in the actual code, it tells me to go right to table 310.15C1 without having to read section. 310.15C1. And, and, and that's actually kind of important because that means that the 24 inch dimension that we're used to really doesn't matter. If you have two cables and they touch each other and they're in thermal insulation or ceiling foam or caulk, 
then you have to apply the ampacity adjustment, whether it's uh, contacting each other for 24 inches or not. So it is a little bit different than NM cable in that regard. Uh, the other thing that it says is, uh, pardon me, the other, the other difference between this and NM cable is in NM cable, if I have an installation like this and I've sealed it with sealing foam or caulk or anything, then you have to apply an ampacity adjustment. And it says that, that that's the case for cables going through wood holes. Uh, this section doesn't reference wood holes. It simply says, look, if it's touching caulk or touching foam and touching more than one cable, then you need to apply an ampacity adjustment. Uh, but in the NM cable rule 334.80, it also tells you that you're not allowed to use the exception in 310.14A2, which would always get you out of that requirement. So looking at this photograph, I don't need to apply an ampacity adjustment because that's not uh, installed with ceiling foam going through that opening. If I were to seal it or caulk it or put bubble gum in there or whatever, then you would have to apply an ampacity adjustment. Uh, but with only two 12-2 cables, it's probably not that big of a deal. I don't think that the, the ceiling foam or caulk issue is nearly as big a deal with AC and MC cable as it is with NM cable when we commonly have multiple wires going through a wood framing opening. I mentioned that the changes we just discussed for addicts and for ampacity apply to MC cable as well. So I'm not going to say the same thing over and over again. Just know that those changed, uh, you know, those changes applied to MC. The only other thing that actually changed specifically for MC cable here in Article 330 is a new Section 330.130 for hazardous locations. The construction requirements for MCHL cable are now included. Kind of interesting that this wasn't here before. Cables marked MC-HL, which is metal clad hazardous locations, must have a gas slash vapor tight metal sheath, a separate equipment grounding conductor, and an outer polymeric jacket. All right, so this is MCHL cable. You can see that it has the outer polymeric jacket. And the other thing that's kind of subtle is it says that the metal sheath has to be gas or vapor tight. And when you really think about that, it means that you could not have what I call traditional uh, MC cable, the spiral interlocking metal tape that we've all uh, installed. You could not use spiral interlocking metal tape with an outer polymeric jacket because that would not be a gas or vapor tight metal sheath. It would have to be the smooth sheath or what they actually use, the corrugated type of sheath. So instead of having one long strip that is a spiral interlock, it's actually just a, a tube that's corrugated. So that is a gas or vapor type metal sheath. Um, not really a, a big change, just something that they really didn't talk about in previous versions of the code and, and probably should have, but you know, things slip by. And this is one of those things that somebody noticed uh, was missing. So they put it into the NEC and, and there you go. So those are the changes for uh, Articles 320 and 320 and 330. <laughs> I uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe and ring the bell.